How do you fancy egg and bacon for your breakfast? Tell me, Vera, is this a trick question? Because you know I would eat egg and bacon for my dinner and my tea and breakfast and all. Right, well, I'll get cracking then. That's two eggs and two slices of fried bread. I know what you're up to, you know. I'm just offering to do you a fry-up, that's all. It's the only time you make me an offer like that is when you're after summer. Give over. And I know what it is, and there is no way that son of ours is getting his feet under my table and nose in my trough. Morning. Say hello to your nana and your granddad. Ah, oh, bless him. Hey, listen, I'm doing your, your dad a fry-up. How does it suit you and our Tommy? Ah, right, go on. We'll have to make our own fry-ups when we get back to Sheffield, won't we, Tommy? <laughs> hey, you will feed him right, won't you, Terry? I'll do my best, ma'am. Yeah. Look, uh, if it's any bother, don't trouble yourself with cooking. No, it's no trouble to me. Not when it's my own flesh and blood. You're being totally unreasonable now, ma'am. Well, I don't think so. OK, so you fancy Stephen Reed. You tell me about it, OK? And because I don't rant and rave about it, I'm in the wrong. I mean, what do you want me to do? Keep a clip round here like Jim McDonald wouldn't have done? No, Is I... that what you wanted? I don't, and that is not what I'm saying. No, because even that would have been wrong. It doesn't matter what I say or do, it will be wrong because you want some sort of a row. No, I'll tell you what I want, and it is not very complicated. I just want some tiny little feeling that you care about me. Of course I care about you. No, I mean the way you care about the really important things, such as money, such as business. That is out of order, and you know it. No, it's not, and that is what this is all about. Well, I'd love to stay and argue with you, but unfortunately, I've got a factory to run, so excuse me. Exactly. Flaming again. Kevin! What's up? This flaming world has gone again. Let's have a look. Ah. It's like it's shot. Of course it is. It I... never stops breaking down. I mean, I think it's shot for good this time. So, how am I going to get this job finished? Well, it's down to Don Brennan, isn't it, I suppose? Up to him to find a replacement. Until we get in touch with him, there's not a lot we can do. Well, aren't you going to give him a ring? <laughs> Can't, mate. First thing this morning, he told me he's at the airport picking up, and the people he's got to pick up, he's got to take to Doncaster. So I don't think it'll be before this afternoon before we see him. Terrific. Vera, it is you that can't see straight. You never could with our Terry. Whatever he's done wrong, you've always found excuses for him. It was always somebody else's fault. I know, because he got in bad company. Of course he did. He went looking for it. Oh, what are we working for, eh? It's not just for the money, is it? It's to better ourselves. And we could be a family again, you, me, our Terry, and little Tommy. You could grow up here. Our Terry could help behind Bar, and then when we finish, well, he could take it home, could not he? I don't go for it, V. There's only one reason Terry's here, and that's that on the wall to see what he can get. No, you're wrong. He didn't even know about this place, did he? He didn't even know about the money. Why won't you give the lad a chance, eh? Set up the bar. Well, let's face it, Alma. You only told Mike about Stephen to avoid causing trouble. I know that. Yeah, what sort? You've avoided trouble. Like, if you wanted Mike to throw a wobbler, you should have let me mam here put a poison in. What do you mean, put her poison? What are you talking about? I've never said a word to anybody about Stephen and Alma, let alone Mike. Audrey, you've been dropping little hints for weeks. Alma, where on earth did you get that idea from? Of course you've been dropping hints, ma'am. I've heard you myself. Oh, I'm surprised at you, girl. I'm off. I'm not standing here while you two make me out to be some kind of bother cause. <laughs> She caused trouble in an empty house, me ma'am. She'd never admit it. You should have left it to her. Should have had Mike and Stephen fighting a duel. Oh, I doubt it. Mind you, if Mike had choice of weapons, it'd be checkbooks at 20 paces. Yeah. When's that cotton jersey from Harper's coming? Yeah, it's on Rosamond Street. That's right, yeah. Bye. Them Never mind them, the cotton jersey from Harper's. When's it getting here? It's not been ordered yet. Not been ordered? 
We'll be out of it by Thursday. Yes, I know. I told you to order it Friday. Yes, I did, but there were nobody there, so I said... Look, never before. mind the excuses. Just do it now, all right? Look, I've been run off my feet all morning. It's not as though I've been sitting around reading the newspaper. Maybe you ought to get somebody else to do stock control. You! That's who I need to do stock control. We've got to start pulling our fingers out round here or we'll all be out of work. You will be looking for a job. And those girls out there. Yes. Uh, Mr Baldwin? What is it? I was just wondering if I could have an hour off this afternoon. You could have the rest of the year off or carry on working here. I mean, make your mind up, it's your choice, cos if you don't want to work... Right. Are you going to phone Harper's or not? They're engaged. I'll keep trying. Yes, you do that. Now, how many are you shopping for? Let me think. Phyllis Pierce. There's Alice Tate. Who else is there? Oh, yes. Old Henry Fallows on the top floor. It's fags he wants. Smokes more than what he eats, he does. Set the smoke alarm off one time, didn't he? <laughs> Silly old beggar. <laughs> well, if you and Mrs Dempsey are prepared to do the shopping, Mr Sugden, I'll go to the health centre and pick up the prescription renewals. Oh. It'll be a real help, will that, Mrs Bishop? Save us legs, won't it, Percy? Right. Oh. I'll see you back here, then. Oh, morning, Percy. Morning, Kenneth. You know Mrs Dempsey, I'll make it. I'm sure I know the face. Of course you do. Lily Dempsey. My late husband, Councillor Dempsey, you'd know him. Of course, Arnold Dempsey. Used to play bowls in my Uncle Al, but yes, I remember. You live in uh, Nightingale Terrace. Well, we did do. I'm in Mayfield Court now, next lot to Phyllis Pierce. Yes, we're, we're doing the shopping for the walking wounded, yeah. Mrs Dempsey and me. Well, good for you, and very nice to see you again, Mrs Dempsey. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Come on. Been married umpteen times, eh, Monty? Aye. Oh. His Uncle Albert always used to stand up for him, though. Can I give you a hand with that? No. Oh, come on, Dad. Must be something I can do. Right. Are we opening up? Five minutes. I've got some crates to bring up from the cellar first. Well, I can do that for you. What do you want fetching up? I've told you, there's no you can do for me in this pub and there never will be. Stop picking on him. It's all right, ma'am. I think you're wasting your time. Right, well, I think I'll go into town, uh, if you don't mind keeping an eye on Tommy for me. No, love. No, you'll go. You'll be all right with me. Don't you worry. I'll see you later. I'm sick of you. Why won't you give him a chance, eh? Chances, Vera. He's had all his chances and he'll get no more off me. So, Phyllis Pierce has got you running her errands now. The one runs poorly. I'm not doing any special favours, if that's what you're thinking. We'll shop for anybody who can't get about, won't we, Mrs Dempsey? Certainly. Thank you. I tell you what, I'd not have come in this shop a few years back, though. I'd not be here now if that Alf Roberts still had it. Oh, didn't you get on with him, then? I couldn't have bagged the fella. And neither could my husband. He should have been the mayor, you know. Only Alf Roberts shoved in front of him. You're going back 20 years. It's history. Doesn't matter. Well, Alf Roberts has always been a very decent chap with us, hasn't he, Maureen? Oh, yes, he oh, has, yes. Oh, hello, Mrs Roberts. Uh, Mrs Roberts, oh, my word, we are formal this morning. <laughs> Roberts? Is that the wife? I know. Behave yourself. Don't start anything. I think we've got the lot of you. Oh, I said, Percy, now you don't mind if I just pop in front of you, do you? Because I'm in a terrible rush. It's all go. <laughs> yes, he does mind. No, I don't. I'm not in any hurry. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you wouldn't mind. I mean, it's not like you've got any work to go to, is it? Uh, uh, five pounds twenty, please. Right. Why? What work have you got to go to? Be surprised if she's ever worked in her life. Five twenty, my, doesn't it add up all that? What a price. Now, where's my checkbook? <gasps> you're shoving front, shouting you're in a hurry, and now you're going to start writing I... your life story. I happen to be a very good customer here. Now, ladies, there's no need for any falling out. Oh, yes, there is. Her husband always pushed herself in front of folk, and now she's at it and all. Think she's somebody, ha! Lady Muck. Hi. Large scotch, whatever Deirdre's having. Oh, thanks very much, Mike. I'll have half a lager with you. No. <laughs> oh, I'll say this for Angela, you know. When she knows she's in the wrong, she's humility personified. You should do anything to get back in your favour. Well, I dare say you remember. I don't remember anything but kind. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, perhaps you weren't treating her right, Dirk. No, no, no. Angela knows when she's wrong. I heard a rumour at the office that you bought your way back into Angela's favour. 
I hear you gave her a new golf bag. Well, I'm, I'm a very magnanimous man, Dirk. I mean, it has to be said, her old golf bag, it was all mildewed, you know, with the earth from your allotment. And what about the clubs? You must have had some stick over them. No, no, no. You see, after our little falling out, she was so upset, she didn't even want to play. That's right. I said to her last night, when I was just giving her clubs a bit of a polish, I said, You polished her golf clubs? You crawled to that woman, no, Norris. Now, no, no, fair dues, fair dues. I mean, they were a bit disgusting. You've spent the entire weekend grovelling to her, haven't you? Certainly not, no. It's been a most enjoyable reconciliation. Oh, yeah, it's most enjoyable. Well, I don't blame her for taking a fancy to Stephen Reed. Yeah, but that's all it was. A fancy. Nothing happened. Because I'm not going raving mad, I'm getting a lot of stick for it. I, uh, I quite fancy Stephen myself. I think me and Alma must go for the same kind of men. Yeah. Well, I won't tell Alma that. No, very wise. Oh, I don't know. Maybe she's upset because this fling she didn't have. That well, might be her last chance anyway. What, you mean she's going through a funny age? Oh, don't say that to her, else you will be in trouble. I'm in trouble already. Can't do right for doing wrong. <laughs> Mike, I take it. Who else? Well, I think that's very nice of him. Well, I expect we got the phone to use his credit card. In fact, I expect he got Josie to do it for him, knowing Mike. I mean, why can't he just bring you around here himself? Well, I think it's a very nice gesture. And it's a peace offering. Your Martin's on nights this week, isn't he? What time does he go to the hospital? Late o'clock, what? Well, get him to drop this into one of the walls for me, will you? Because I don't think I want them. What the hell are you doing with these tools, Kevin? We're using them, that's all. Yeah, these welders are known for it. It's just one damn thing after another. Can't you be more careful? We are careful. And I did tell you when you bought a garage that most of the equipment was on its last legs. Yeah. I did warn you. Yeah, well, I wish you'd warn me louder. All right, all right. How much is it going to cost to repair? <sighs> Look, it's shop done. You're going to have to buy a replacement. Yeah, and if we're talking second hand, then it's going to be... You're damn right we're talking second hand. Then it's going to be anything up to a thousand. Oh, come on. All right, you might be able to get one for 500 minimum. But on that, it's probably on its last legs as well. Look, we need one done, otherwise we may as well just shut. Well, that's... Use your heads for me. Ring round, ask your mates, try and find a cheaper one, eh? Cos, I'll tell you straight, the money I'm paying out... Well, it frightens me. Yes, but because I did... Yeah, ladies. Oh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Why don't you have a few days off, old man? Might buck you up a bit. If you're suggesting getting Mike to take me away on a second on him... No, then. just make get yourself out of the rut. You know, a bit of shopping, a bit of time on your own. I mean, it might brighten you up a bit. I'm getting on your nerves, right? No! You have me on Mike's side if you go on like this. I never thought I'd hear myself say that. Well, I must say I could do with a few days off. I mean, how would you manage? Don't think your mother's going to volunteer after this morning's little skirmish. Well, I was thinking of Roy Crop. Well, he said he was all right when he covered for me that time during the school holidays. He was OK. Got up a few people's noses. Especially Mike's. <laughs> On second thoughts, he's just a thing. <laughs> Cooks breakfast at a hotel, doesn't he? So he'll just be finishing when our rush time starts. I'll give him a ring. The cheek of that Audrey Roberts. Has she ever pushed in front of you? Well, not that I can recall. But I don't think I'd remember if she had. I make an effort not to brood about such things. Oh, I don't. I like a good brood, me. Hiya, Vera. Who's this, then? Oh, this is our little Tommy. Well, hello, Tommy. <laughs> My name's Tricia. I'm a friend of your Nana's. So this is uh, Terry's little lad, is it? Yeah, he's a little belter. Good-looking boy. Takes after his dad. Well, in some ways it does. Anyway, come on, Tommy, let's be having you on. Yeah, I love the sweeties. Oh, what do you say? <laughs> I can see you in him, you know. Can you? Yeah, yeah, round the eyes. Little lad. Terry was telling me all about his mother and that. 
Ain't it a shame? A little lad needs a mother. I mean, I know that. But Sneak gets all the mother he needs when it comes to visit me. Anyway, Arthur's got a steady girlfriend now, you know, in Sheffield. Oh, yeah, they're practically engaged. Oh, so not definitely engaged, then? Come on, Tommy. Let's have you home. I'll be in later. Tell your Terry. He'll be busy. Oh, am I glad to be home? It is brood if you fancy a cup. Oh, yeah. I haven't stopped all day. Baldwin's had me running around that factory like a scalded cock. Well, I told you he would. Yeah, well, I'd sooner it were that way round than t'other. He's a crafty swine, is Baldwin. Oh, chuckling that garage is falling to bits. The MIG world is gone today. Kevin said it's too far gone to repair. Is it really essential we have one of the... What do you call it? Well, the lads say it is. Could cost another thousand quid. Fair million, Baldwin. Well, that's why the garage were going cheap. Needed money being spent on it. Aye, my money, not flaming Baldwin's. Half a lad, love. Come on, boy. Hiya. Good evening. On your own, Dad. Can I uh, give you a lift? Get the other side of the bar. Please yourself. Oh, uh, I'll pay for that and uh, quite a bit of for me, please. I met your little boy today when he was out with Vera. He's a little smasher. Yeah, he's a great kid. He's a bit younger than my lad. I've, um, I'm separated from my husband, did I tell you? Yeah, you might have done. Are you having one, Dad? No. Nope. Is anybody serving or what? With you in a minute. Uh, so, um, Angela was in the office today. Mm, large as life and twice as difficult. Uh, did she? Uh, I mean, was there any unpleasantness between her and Norris? I'm afraid not. Oh, Derek, that's not very charitable. Well, I'm sorry, Mavis, but nothing would give me greater pleasure than to see Angela pursuing Norris through the office, as far as the lift shaft, and then hurling him down it. Oh, Derek. No, I tell a lie. I'd get even greater pleasure if Angela then jumped down the lift shaft after him. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of events coming up at the town hall. Oh, off. good. Mind you, I'm going to need a new outfit. Oh. No, well, I can't wear the same one that I wore last time, or the time before that. Yeah, well, I say the town hall. It's actually the town hall steps. Oh. Where am I supposed to wear them? Well, wear your raincoat. You'd be the right <laughs> then. No, no, no. It's, it's just about plans for the millennium. That's the year 2000. Yeah, I do know what the millennium is, Alf. I didn't know they were making any plans for it. Well, the truth is they're not. I mean, oh. somebody's just gotten onto the fact that they should. Oh. Well, what will we be doing then? Well, it's just a photo opportunity. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll just be standing there near a suggestion box. Oh. With your health? I mean, you may not be here in 2000. Oh, thanks a lot. That, that really makes me feel good. Oh, sorry. Do you fancy popping down Rovers for a quick one? Uh, well, I'd rather keep one in my pocket where things are going over. Oh, oh, you're in. Glad I caught you. Something wrong? This uh, fax came into the office from Harper's. You've been working late, haven't you? Had no option. Anyway, I can't make head in the tail of it. Now, you spoke to him today, didn't you? Yeah. Hang on, hang on. What's all this? Oh, the, the delivery we've not had. Mr Baldwin's worried. Yeah, it's one of the suppliers your good lady's been dealing with. Yeah, during working hours, you might do. Do you know what time is? Oh, come on, Don. No, you come on. It's seven o'clock. She works for you till half past five. Is she on overtime? Is she hell? Don't get worked up, Don. Look, it's time somebody told this fellow just what he can do and what he can't do. He can't shove his way in here any time of day and night and treat you like a servant. Can I have a look at the facts, Mr Baldwin? Forget it. I'll see you in the morning. Aye. I'm not having him trying it on. What did he have to go and do that for? Well, he was out of order. I'll be the judge of that. It's my job and my life. I can deal with Mr Baldwin. I don't need you speaking for me. I'm quite capable of speaking for myself. In future, don't go sticking your oar in. I tell you, it's the year 2000. No, it's 2001, really. I mean, that's the start of the new millennium. I mean, 2000 is just the end of the old one. Have it your way. Have it your way. I mean, if you want to start a year late, fine. But you miss a right good do, I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, pal. There's something in me ale. You what? Look at that. It's a lump of muck or something. Took you long enough to find it, didn't it? What's that mean? Well, it's floating in the last inch of your ale. How come you didn't find it when it was floating on the top? You calling me a liar? No, I'm saying nothing. I'll put you another pint on the house. And the rest. I can have you for selling bad ale. Compensation, pal. You won't find a cleaner pint in the Northern Union Cup. 
There you are. On the house. And I think when you've sucked it, you better find yourself another pub that suits you better. That's a dirty glass. That glass is clean. Ah, that's why hey, you call me a liar. Hey! hey. Here, watch out, Terry. You want some, do you? You out. Or else what? Or else you'll need carrying. Yeah! Oh, oh, it. Oh, 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 okay, okay. okay. It's oh, a lousy oh, pub, any road. Oh, you better oh, get up. Oh. If you know what's good for you, don't come back. What was his problem? You okay, Dad? Yeah, I, I could have handled it. Oh. Yeah, thanks to our Terry. I'm grateful, love, even if he isn't. Oh. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, forget it. It's OK. I tell you what, though, I think I'll make sure he's cleared off. You don't want him lobbing a brick through the window, do you? Be right back. Oh, that one brilliant. You must be dead proud of him. Yes, I am. And his father should be an owl. It's me! No. Is there a drink there for me? Help yourself. Well, where are the flowers? Didn't you get them? I ordered a great big bouquet. I got them. Well, I'd have thought you'd have wanted to bring them home. I told Martin Platt to take them to the hospital. Well, that's a bit naff, isn't it? Alma, what is wrong with you, eh? I'm tired of coming down the bottom of your list of priorities. I mean, way down. A long way down below your business and the car and your latest deal and the latest stroke you've been pulling, like bamboozling Don Brennan. I mean, I'm way below all those things. Oh, I see. What you want is my 100% attention. Well, it's fine. I'll sell the business. I'll get shot of it to whoever have it. We sell the cafe as well. And we buy a nice little bungalow. Somewhere near Southport. But not with a sea view, because we'll uh, be watching the pennies, won't we? And then you and me are sitting there. Like Darby and Joan. And wait for death. If that's what you want, you can have it. Dave? You there? Yeah? <laughs> How was that then? Brilliant, mate. You're playing a blinder. Hey, I didn't hurt you, old man, neither. Wouldn't have mattered if you had, mate. It's due a good thumping anyway. <laughs> yeah. 20 we said, right? Yeah? Yeah. There you go. Do you a favour sometime, mate.